What I want to do is explain what is a living trust and how is it a complete will replacement tool. A living trust properly done is a way to provide for your incapacity, avoid court while you're alive. It's a way to avoid court when you die. And for the married folks, it's a way to have a doubling effect. Double the amount that you can pass free of Washington state estate taxes. Double the federal exemption. You can protect almost $11 million. I mean, it's really powerful. And then if you combine it with other things, you can have the right Medicaid planning and irrevocable planning and things like that. But it's got to be done right. It takes some work. So what legacy wealth planning is, it involves a trust, a living trust. Legacy wealth planning is something that a small number of firms, highly trained firms, do that uses living trusts in a way that has more protections for you and for the beneficiaries. And of course, it avoids court. And also, it's a way to capture the non-financial. So how do you handle the financial stuff as well as the non-financial? That's what legacy wealth planning is. So the magic of actually legacy wealth planning begins with your assets. Think about that. It was the assets was the problem with Bill and Mary, right? That's what caused court during lifetime. That's what caused court when they were both gone. So maybe if we could just move things out of their name, it wouldn't be a problem. Does that sound like a good idea, just move everything out of your name? Well, it'd be pretty bad if all of a sudden you give everything to someone else. But what if I told you there's a time-tested method it's actually more than a thousand years old, older than wills, to actually use a trust as a way to move things into the name of a trust and still have management and control. Well, that's great, and that's what we're going to talk about. So let me, let me give you an example. We can put joint assets into a trust, and actually we can make them become community, which is a good way to own property in our state. But if you want to maintain separate property, that's fine. Both of my wife's folks have died of cancer. And we protected her inheritance. So that condo that we own part of in Sun Valley, it's in our trust. We avoid court in Idaho, but it's as her separate property. So there's lots of ways to protect things. So it's up to you. For a married couple, it can go in as community. It can go in as separate. We can have more than one. We have a lot of blended families. You may want to do differing things. So that's kind of a little bit. You know, the, 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 the wealth trust is the, the chest that owns assets. You deed things in. You have to own real property in deeds. We can assign businesses. My, I have two companies. My law firm is a corporation. It's in my trust. Um, then we need to talk about the players. I mean, who are the people involved? The trustors are the ones that create it. Trustees are the managers. Buy, sell, lease, transfer. Do the tax return, do that. But if you got to choose just one position, most of us would want to choose the beneficiary. All right? I mean, that's kind of fun. So this can, can work for a married couple. This could also work for a single. So I have one married couple here that could just play along with me and be a sample. I'm kind of looking this way. Anyone over here? Any married couple? Anyone here? You will? Great. Very good. So you guys, if you did a trust, you would be the trustors, the creators of the trust. Who would you want to list as trustees? My son. Your son. It's a good idea as a successor trustee, but you guys can be the initial trustees. And then you can list him as a backup. Who would you want to list as beneficiaries of your trust? My wife. Hey, there's a smart man. He'll, pray, he'll, he'll, he'll <laughs> provide for his wife. Good answer. Thank you for playing along. So the point is, you can be the trustors, the trustees, and the beneficiaries. My wife and I are all three people. Now, we list backup trustees. We actually have my parents. And then we go to siblings. So you don't have to list bank trust companies, but you can. You can be the beneficiaries. And you know, we have listed our children as beneficiaries, especially after we're gone, but even during our lifetime. And then, you know, my kids are 19 and 17, but I've even planned for my grandkids and for charity. So anything you can do in a will, you can do in a trust. But often better. So it's business as usual. It does not affect the way you do your income taxes. Your tax doesn't, inv you don't tell the IRS you even have this. It's a pain. They don't want more tax identification numbers. Just you do all your taxes like normal. It doesn't reassess the value of your home. If you're getting a kind of, you know, sometimes the elderly get a special discount on real property taxes and things like that, we don't disqualify that. 
So it's really, it's a nice, it's a nice thing. Now, why would you go to the work and expense of getting things organized? Well, you remember the old Midas commercial? You can pay me now or pay me later. There's a little bit of that in estate planning. Wills generally cost less up front, and there's a whole lot more work when you die. Trusts are a bit more work and expense up front, but who knows your assets better, you or the kids or beneficiaries? Probably you guys. Doesn't it make sense to kind of get it organized now? Maybe fix some title problems? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how does this plan work to provide protection for the family. Now, how many of you wish that you could uh, maybe have all the wisdom you have in life now, but go back maybe 10, 20 years, make just a few different choices? Would that be kind of nice? Yeah. That's called a do-over. You know, Back to Future talked about that for stock picks. Uh, but let's imagine that Bill and Mary, they came in and they met with us. They met with me and they put together a legacy wealth plan. So in here, they've got their trust, and you can look at this. This is Homer and Marge Simpson. There's no client privacy issue. You can look at it. We graphed out how do we do it and protect it when one dies. We've got asset protection and remarriage protection. There's the trust. There's a will. There's an attorney. There's health care. Um, the health care power of attorney, the living will, the, the green obnoxious pulsed form we even have in here. I don't know if you're in the medical field, but this is more likely to be honored than even what an attorney drafts. And then we even burn a disc. And the disc is a summary of what's in this plan, right? It, it's there for the next generation or the successor trustee is a, is a nice tool to, um, this is gonna fall. No, oh, it's open there. So let's imagine they came in and they saw us. They did this entire plan. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at how it worked during their life, when one died, and then even when both are gone. Now since you know Bill and Mary, the story's gonna go a little faster this time. So the first thing that happens is Bill has a stroke. Is there going to be a court process? No. no, and why is that? Mary can refi the home that's in the trust. She has authority to sign all returns. She's got a health care power of attorney, a HIPAA authorization form. Even the IRA not in the trust, she's got a power of attorney to manage it. So we don't have to go see this judge. This avoids a lot of humiliation. This saves costs. This is really nice. Now we're going to bump off Bill. He dies. What about now? Is there going to be a court process? No. And why is that? Probate is the process of retitling. It's not just proving, it's retitling. We don't need to go to the court to retitle. Yeah, Washington State says you're supposed to file the will. That's 20 bucks. That does not cause a probate. So we're able to avoid this judge, save a lot of fees right now. No lengthy court process, no public record. You saw those famous estates. Right? When Bing Crosby died, there was no, no probate. We don't know who got his assets. He planted a living trust. I'm surprised that Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis planned in a will. She was a private person, but we can all read her will. You can go home tonight and you can Google, or this day, you can Google famous estates. You can read Elvis Presley's will before the end of today if you go on the internet. Here it's private. There may be 40,000 probates going on in King County now, but those clients that have a trust, that's private, it's not available. And it avoids court in each state. So with my wife and I, we'll avoid court in Idaho as well as Washington. Let's so we'll avoid four probates with one trust. What about some of this information? What about Bill and his legacy? We help clients cover for that. We've got a booklet here called My Legacy, My Life Story, and My Own Words. And it starts with a chart, you know, who, who are your parents? Do you have children? That sort of thing. This is nothing you have now. This is something we give to our clients. So I'm just, it's got a section on childhood, and it's got, you know, one of those questions is, well, what type of responsibilities did you have? Did you have an allowance? Another question is, uh, what teachers do you remember, and why do you think you remember them more than others? Sometimes you get early lessons. What types of hobbies did you have? In family life, what did you enjoy doing with your father? Um, what were your favorite cars back then? And then on the job, what was the first job you got? What was your salary? Those sorts of questions are, are pretty cool. And I was kind of doing more of the male questions. We'll talk about Mary's later. Now we're going to revisit Ralph. Ralph, we remember Ralph, right? He's not smiling this go around, is he? This time, what Bill says, look, I want to protect this, these assets. If my wife were to remarry, I want a little bit of protection there. 
And so Bill had this trust for his wife to provide for her needs, her health, her support, her income, all sorts of things. But she said, their document says that you have to have a prenup in place before you get married or you can't be the trustee. So she's free to remarry. And Ralph says, how come you want me to sign this prenup? Don't you love me? Don't you trust me? And she says, well, of course I love you. I want to get remarried. It's just that my first spouse, Bill, didn't trust you. It's that my attorney, Steve, didn't trust you. It's that my kids don't trust you. Yeah, totally optional. Now, my parents have been married, what, 53, almost 54 years? And they had me amend their trust and put in a required prenup provision. You can't do that in a will. A will is your own document, but in a joint trust, you get to say the rules. So that's a way to prevent him from being a money bag. He can't suck up the money. She's free to remarry. That's fine, but now we're protecting the family. That's pretty sturdy. What about these other things? What if Mary, hope she doesn't hit a bus full of children, but what if she's in a car accident? Everything that Bill has now is protected from creditors. Remember I talked about three trust or trustee beneficiary? When one of them dies, you get asset protection. That was a question during the break. There's no creditor protection in a revocable living trust while you're alive. There's other kind of trust for that that we still do. But here, once one dies, you get asset protection. And you get complete growth tax-free. What if you put, I had a client put 500,000 of Boeing stock into a trust after her husband died. Wife got dividends and this and that, whatever, for the rest of her life. When she died eight and a half years later, 500,000 was, was worth three and a half million. And it all went to the children free of estate tax, zero estate tax. You may have heard of portability and this and that. That's a fancy tax thing. We can help you with that. But this is a way to make sure you've got creditor protection and all the growth is tax free. Now, what if Mary needed nursing home care? As long as we know beforehand, we can draft the trust and even a will. We may even want to probate part of the assets to get complete asset protection on that. So even the state of Washington, it's like, how thick is your trust? Who you, the state's a big, strong creditor. So we can build it the way you want. Now, when Mary gets Alzheimer's, I think we can agree Susan's the one that we're going to appoint, not John. So we're, you know, again, I guess John could bring some action, but she's in the driver's seat. It's going to be really hard to contest the plan. We're not going to have to go to court to have routine management. So with proper planning now, if Mary goes in and she's got $7,000 a month, we completely avoid having to spend Bill's portion. All we have to deal with is Mary's portion. And there's ways to plan with that as well. So now when Mary dies, we're still not going to have court, right? No court at all because the trust didn't die. And of course, now we're going to have zero estate taxes that we had to pay before. Now that's gone. So what about the non-financial? In the same booklet, I highlighted some things that often women might want to talk more about. You know, what were some of the uh, wisest things your father told you? What was your favorite memory of your mother? How did your mother vote? Um, did you grow up having any pets? What were the fashion trends in your school days, and were you in style? <laughs> On love and marriage, who was your first kiss with? How old were you when you met your spouse? You know, my parents have been married all these years. They rode the same school bus from first grade on. They know each other well, but they don't know all the answer for each other's questions. And at the back, it talks about the big picture. What was the happiest time of your life? What was the, the busiest or what was the most difficult? And when Jean does our signing, she says in her Tennessee twang, you know, the best things in life aren't things. And that's what this is a reminder of. So rather than just the booklet, we can email this to our clients. And you can include pictures and stories. It's a great way. Think of it, your memorial, there's stories to tell. But think of now the legacy for the next generation or two where they can read about grandma and grandpa. Mary's done that now. So we looked at what happened to each of them now. Instead of there being 700,000 left or something, we got you know, more than a million. Are they ready for the inheritance? <coughs> well, many of you may have been wondering, why do we have tubes of toothpaste out there? Yeah. A toothpaste, not just because my father-in-law was a dentist, but this is, a, this is a great metaphor for a trust. I mean, how does this work? 
you know, if I take this toothpaste and I were to squeeze it out in the front row, it'd be kind of gross. Anyone could get the toothpaste, right? It's unprotected. But we use a little, pour it on a, on a toothbrush, and we cap it. What is in here, the assets, the money in a trust is still protected. It's been said, don't put your trust in money, put your money in trust. I'll hold on to this. So, I think that what we can do is we're really a little bit worried about Susan's marriage. We you know, usually have signs when the kids are going through a rough marriage. You don't trust that in-law. For John, we got all sorts of worries about management. So I like to say there's nothing as unequal as the equal treatment of unequals. So why not have a trust come to save the day? Why not, when Bill and Mary are gone, why not say, okay, Susan, what you get is an access trust. We call this a family access trust. She's in charge of the tube of toothpaste. Remember, Bill and Mary, they're both gone. So now we broke up that group of three. So Susan can be the trustee and the beneficiary, but she has asset protection. What if Jason files for divorce? What's in the tube still is protected. It's way better than relying on state law. We have a special co-trustee, a trust protector that comes in and says we cannot distribute during pending litigation or a legal separation or whatever. I'm not saying he couldn't file for divorce. I'm saying this is way stronger. It might be that you trust Susan. Maybe she wants to empty it after a few years. Maybe it's not the marriage you're worried about. Maybe your, your kid is a, a doctor or a lawyer. They could be sued. My parents, they have four tubes of toothpaste. When they're both gone, I'm the successor trustee is the oldest and the estate planning attorney, although each of my siblings are good choices. I'm going to divide it into four tubes. I'm in charge of mine. If my youngest brother decides to empty his, that's okay. I think you could give a Susan that sort of thing. Now with John, it's got to be different, right? We're not going to trust John. In fact, he's a walking liability factory, right? You <laughs> cannot let him be the trustee. I call this a century trust. Think of the Roman centurions, right? Big and strong. He can't be his own trustee. Now I'm not sure Susan is the best choice. That might create sibling rivalry. I tell you, if I were the trustee, I wouldn't buy him a Corvette. I'd get him a Corvair. I probably wouldn't buy him a car, right? Um, I would probably just give him a bus pass, uh, you know. I would pay for alcohol rehab, and I could pay for schooling. I could pay his rent. Even the IRS and the state of Washington can't get the money. Why? Because he doesn't have it. I wouldn't give him a bunch of cash. I'd pay for his needs. Now it's protected from more divorces and lawsuits. It's completely protected. So when I'm meeting with you, I'm trying to decide. I'm going to ask some nosy questions. Tell me about your children. Are you worried about how they handle money? Tell me about their marriages. I want to know who could manage your money <laughs> while you're alive. And then, you know, what's it going to look like if you just dump, you know, traditional state planning is divide, dump, and dissipate. Here, we're talking about how can we build a legacy. Now, if he gets his act together, absolutely. We can have also, I have one client not just one, but this happened recently, she's got a matching fund. So whatever her child earns, the trust will match the W-2 income. Okay? You don't want to pass on affluenza, right? You want to pass on some good work ethic. So we can build the trust however you like. It's not a matter of me telling you what to do. It's a matter of me learning how you'd like to protect your heirs. Now, there's two more examples I'm going to give a family uh, legacy wealth planning. Let's talk about asset protection with retirement funds. Back to my story, so Frank and Glenna, Glenna died, they did a spousal rollover, right? So you take the spouse's name off and now it's all in Frank's name. When do you have to start taking IRA money? 70 and a half. Actually Frank, he right when he, um, well I won't get into that. He was just about to start taking, you know, 9-11s when he actually got really sick with pancreatic cancer. Anyway, so he just starts taking when he's 70 and a half. But he listed two children, his two children, his son, and then his daughter, my wife, Susan. So when he died, Bob got his half of the IRA, and my wife, it still says, Frank C. Rice for the benefit of Susan D. Waltar. But this is called a stretch or a conduit. So... She, in year one, got 141st of dad's balance. And then it's managed, and then you, know, you look, take a picture of what it's worth at the end of the calendar year, and then next year she takes 140th, and then 139th. So it's been you know, 12 years now or so. That's an IRA stretch. What do you think would happen with Bill and Mary if they did that? Well, I love you, honey, this and then, then it's half to John, half to Susan. 
You suppose John's going to carefully manage those monies? No, he's going to pay it all. It can be gone in two weeks. There's no stretch. There's no annuity. That's not good. So the American Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys have drafted a trademark document called a Family Retirement Preservation Trust. And experts in the field, Natalie Choate out of Boston and Ed Slott, a bunch of people have looked at all our forms and said, these are great. So here's how it works. Bill and Mary could say, hey, they're the primary beneficiaries. But when they're gone, one half is for Susan to be administered according to the Family Retirement Preservation Trust. And one half, most importantly, for John is to be managed that way. Why? Because we use John as the measure in life for his share, but he's not the trustee. You can use Fidelity, Schwab, you can use your financial advisor, whatever. Probably Susan's the perfect trustee. She will manage the money, and every year she'll make sure he gets a check. That's really strong. Now, this is hot off the press. This is news. There is asset protection here that is being lost throughout the nation. Even you that have really good adult responsible kids, you're not worried at all. In a lot of states now, they say, look, you can't go after IRAs during your lifetime. Like in Washington, a million dollars is protected from bankruptcy in your IRA or whatever. But in a lot of states, they say, well, once it goes to the kids, they're not earning. If someone has died. Why should a creditor have to wait? And so a lot of states are saying, you can go after those monies in a bankruptcy of the child or in a lawsuit. Not so if you use this. If you route things through a protected trust, you get normal trust protection. So that was something we covered a little bit at the break. That's why this is better. Is that, do you understand? Well, we can cover this in greater detail. Let me give you the last example of uh, another use for legacy planning. If you've got a special needs child or grandchild, you love them dearly. But you don't want to just give them a bunch of money. If you dump the money directly on them, they're going to be disqualified. They're not going to get the governmental benefit. They're going to lose all that insurance and housing and whatever benefits they get. So it's much better to say, I'm going to supplement. It's called a special needs trust. What I give to them, I give in trust. And it won't replace any of the monies they're getting. It will supplement. It will do what's not covered. And we can draft this creatively to do all sorts of things. Usually, you don't have to have the whole estate. You can have a smaller amount. But it depends on the needs of the beneficiary. And then you could say, what happens when that beneficiary dies? Well, if they had children, you can give it to the children. The point is, it doesn't go to the state of Washington. Not a dime of it needs to go back and pay the state. So it can go back to your other kids or your favorite charity. So that's a really powerful tool. Whew, that's a lot of material. Your heads are probably spinning by now. Uh, the informational part of the seminar is over. We've given you lots of stories that we find happen to clients, kind of good example stories. But you remember, I had you close your eyes. I had you think a little bit about the effect of uh, your death on your loved ones. I've got a friend who's been married and divorced a couple of times. He's got children from two different wives. He's got businesses in eastern Washington, where I grew up, as well as over here. He will not plan. And I cornered him one day. I said, Aaron, how come you won't do your estate planning? He said, Steve, I think deep down, I just want it to be a miserable day on all my loved ones when I die. <laughs> I hope he's joking. I really hope he's joking. But he's probably going to get his wish. And if you were to corner Barb out there, Barb is my post-death paralegal. And when someone dies and they haven't done good planning, the kids call us and they come in and we talk about the court or this or that, they're upset. They're kind of mad at mom and dad. They're dealing with anger and loss in a bunch of different ways. And they don't like it when we say, well, here's our $10,000 to, to go to court and da, 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 da. Um, it's a different story when we have trust clients. When we have someone we've met with, we've planned for, and they call us and they say there's been a death, we send them a letter. We say, we're so sorry to hear about the death. Please take care of the burial, memorial, all that stuff. And when you're up to it, come in and we'll give you one hour free consult just to kind of explain the process. And usually we are hired to do things, you know. Sometimes it's, it's more, sometimes it's less, depending on who's doing, you know, we've got a three-page checklist. There's things to do when you die. But the trust is way less expensive than going to court. It's way less than half, sometimes it's pretty minimal. And you know, the nice thing is when the kids come to us after both have been gone, it's really nice and they say, I just wish I could say thank you to mom and dad for caring so much to make this really pretty easy. Now that's a legacy, that's a defining moment. 
I told you about why we do this. I've got the mind and attorney of the heart of a pastor. How do I do this? By being involved in the American Academy, by having all of my staff trained. They like to go to these summits and these events and, and, and keep current. What do we do? We meet with one family at a time to figure out their plan. We've got a process for this. So we do these first two things at the first consult. We meet with you. Today's been a great day to tell you stories, but when you come in, I'm not going to talk about Bill and Mary. I'm going to ask about you and your plan. What are your goals? We're going to design a plan for you. So that's all covered. We sign a fee agreement, that sort of thing. We talk about you get to go home and relax. Wow, we started a plan. We draft up this stuff. I've got a will plan as well as a trust plan. You can look at some samples here. Then you come back in and you get it signed. Executed, delivered, that means it's signed, it's legal. We provide the witnesses and the notary and all that stuff. We give you up to 30 days after it's signed to make changes. We want it to fit, you know? We don't like to send you all the papers beforehand. We kind of give you a summary of your agents. Then you come and you get it signed. And then again, we give you time to sleep on it and feel good about it. In fact, we like to have a meeting afterwards to talk about things beyond just the trust and estate plan. We want to talk about your insurance, your finances, Remember, some people are worried about long-term care. It's kind of hard to cover that. But if you want, you can give us copies of stuff, and we will give you a free review because we've got good advisors we can work with there. And if we've done advanced planning and irrevocable trust and Medicaid planning, we've got to make sure we've dotted every I across every T. Now, those can't be changed. An irrevocable plan can't be changed after you die. And then it's a lifetime of communication. Many clients want our monthly e-newsletter. And you know, sometimes you'll save the articles, sometimes we get feedback. If you don't want to be on that, that's fine. Many people like these. These are the articles. These are quarterly newsletters that we produce. Different articles, you know, a legacy everyone can leave. Assets are valuable, but memories are priceless. Um, there's even an article here, would you do your own will? Would you be your own doctor? These are quarterly, they're all available from our website. You can log on and get them. And then we like to offer clients a free review every three years. If there's nothing to change, there's no fee. If you're going to change things, it depends on how much is being changed. And we like to do client appreciation from time to time as well. Well, remember, mere head knowledge is not going to get it done, right? You've got to, got to bring it down to here. So how do you actually move ahead? Knowledge isn't enough. What do you need to do? How do you make it happen? When should you get started? Well, Probably now, right? When it's, you're thinking about it, you're motivated, you've got some of the knowledge in your head, you know what you want to discuss further during a consultation, and what's the investment to get it done? I kind of already reviewed this booklet. I kind of walked you through that. It's got the will. Um, well, actually, it's, it, the, the trust may include a, a, an access trust for the responsible kids or the professional children. A century trust is big and strong. You might include a special needs trust. The Family Retirement Preservation Trust for IRAs and and 401ks, things like that. We always do a will that revokes the old. And if you've got minor children, we, we, we need to list guardians somewhere, right? The property agreement will be a great way to say, we do want things to be community for the best tax treatment, avoid capital gains. Or you may want to say, I want to keep this as a separate property. That's fine. Let's clarify that. Financial powers of attorney, a lot of times they're not big enough to handle IRAs and stuff. So ours are pretty, pretty long. They're thorough. Manage LLC interest. Are you going to allow gifting or not? Healthcare documents, critical. We do a healthcare power of attorney. We do a directive to physician, the living will. We do a HIPAA authorization form, and we even coordinate it with the POLST. In my first book, I had a chapter on life ending matters. I mean, we, you don't want these things to fight one another. The HIPAA authorization form. You may have an in-law that you don't ever want to make a choice, but they're in the medical field. They should have access to be able to review the file and, you know, talk to your agents before they make choices. A funeral trust, kind of a highlight on this. If you've got a $10,000 policy for burial, actually the best example is Costco cards. Sometimes people have People's Memorial, right? You've probably heard of that. I mean, they think for $35 it's going to make things easy. Well. When you have a Costco card, does that mean all of your buying at Costco is free? No, it means you're a member and you get whatever they have on the shelf when you go to buy. So a better way, I think, 
and I have read a whole, whole chapter on it in my first book. A funeral trust is a way where you take some money and you stick it in an irrevocable trust. It's income tax free, it's probate free, it's protected from creditors, and it grows. In fact, it grows better than a CD. It'll grow at 3%. That's not incredible, but it's helpful. The real nice thing is it will pay one business day after you die in any of all 50 states. It can be used at any funeral home in the country. It can be used for burial. It can be used for cremation. In fact, you know, there's this little card and you can call and you can, you can call a toll-free number and they know what the cost is for burial and cremation in your heirs. So it'll help the, the heirs save money. And by the way, what if you save money? Instead of paying $1,400 for a burial, you pay $695. It can pay for death certificates, the past, the memorial, the flowers. If, if, if there's extra, you tell me where it goes. It can pay to your state. Most people say it pays to the kids or to the trust. It's just a way to make sure the kids don't have to front the money. One estate, a really estranged son, when his dad died, he felt guilty. He paid like $32,000 for all this stuff that all the other kids were horrified. But he was dealing with his guilt. So that's a funeral trust there. I, I mentioned this is the booklet, the way to kind of capture family values and legacy. If you don't have any way to capture your, your memories on a DVD, we also have that as an option for you. You remember we talked about what's the most important ingredient of a good estate plan. Here's the answer I've come up with. We believe the most important part is making sure that what's most important to you is covered. I can't tell you that it's one size fits all, right? I think that's important. For some people, avoiding court is really important. For others, they're not so worried about that. Most people don't want people to fight and contest your plan, so it takes some planning and organization. I used to say the most important part was the right estate planning attorney. Now, that's a little self-serving. But I think you'll agree you want not a fast food attorney. Some of it will shove everyone in the right, you know, the same instrument. Some only do wills, some only do trusts. You want someone that is trained in law. Someone that can listen. We have two ears, right? Before advising. Someone that is able to avoid court. Someone that can work with properties throughout the US. Someone knowledgeable in estate and Medicaid, et cetera. Someone like me, a member of the academy. When are you going to know if you had a good estate plan? You may not, right? <laughs> the kids, the grandkids are all. You want a plan that will be around for generations. I think that's a good, good plan. So don't be fooled. It takes money, it takes expense to get it done right. So we're going to talk about how, especially with the trust, you know, people are not often trained in law school on how do you do trusts. So there's a lot of things in a design here. So I'm going to talk about fees. But what was the cost of failing to plan? What did it cost Bill and Mary? $375,000. My fee is only half that, so it's a good deal. <laughs> so what are your options? I mean, you could do it yourself. Would you operate on yourself? I don't think so. No. I tell you what, I mean, I like a bargain in certain areas of life. If I'm getting Michelin tires with an $80,000 mile guarantee, I can go to discount, big O, Costco, right? Not so with the will and trust. They're not words on a page. I have a, um, I met someone who had the exact same, same language as my old firm. They copied every word of the trust. This was before you could scan, and it was wrong. They just had different names of trustees. It didn't fit the, the family at all. The words are, are nothing. You, you pay for the advice. If I'm going to go see a heart surgeon, I'm not saying, are you 995? I'm going to say, have you done hundreds or thousands? Are, you know, have you told people they don't need it and there's other options? That's what you want. I'm the heart surgeon, right? So I think you get what you pay for. What's the most expensive advice? Bad advice. So let me show you what our fees are. Now this is on page 15. Go ahead and write this down in your booklet. So for a single person, it's less than $3,300 to get a legacy wealth plan in place. That's this fee. For a married couple, 40, 4,300 bucks, so 4,295. That includes the will, the trust, the powers attorney, the health care. I include up to three deeds as part of this. So you can write these down. Can you see those numbers? 3,295 for a single, 4,295 for a married. So that's kind of what we call the silver plan. A gold plan means you are actually protecting the next generation. 
So Bill and Mary, I didn't charge 500 more per child. I don't charge per child, but they wanted asset protection. So this, for extra $500, so they paid $47.95. They got the asset protection trust. They got the century trust for John. Hi, Suze. They also had um, the family retirement preservation trust. So they had all this protection. So I charged a bit more. It's easy to say outright to charities or children. I don't recommend it, but that's kind of what I do. Now, if you're doing irrevocable Medicaid, VA, doing all sorts of things, I don't know if we're just helping you title something or if we're doing one, two, or more irrevocable trusts. So that's a lot of work. So the fees would generally be more. Another way to think about this is to turn it upside down. It's kind of the more you pay, the more you protect. So Bill and Mary, they had protection right in this zone. They protected each other and, and the next generation, all that sort of thing. You know, if you're gonna try to make sure the state can't put a lien on your home, that's gonna cost a bit more. Others of you may not need a legacy wealth trust or may not want it. Maybe you're gonna do a will plan. Maybe you're gonna do a power of attorney, you know? So that's kind of, does that make sense? Kind of the more you do, the more you protect and generally cost more. Please don't let this happen. Don't put your head in the sand like an ostrich and say, oh, it's too much, I can't, you know, no, 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 no. Remember, we're all gonna die. Let me tell you a couple of stories about poor planning. He died, but he came back. He died, but he came back. That does happen. That, that can happen. That's a second chance. Okay. One of uh, a guy that was in my rotary group, I was at this very hotel upstairs. He came to my seminar, big strapping guy, big logger hand, you know, stuff like that. He says, Steve, this was great. I'm coming in for a consultation. Well, he canceled the consultation. I think his wife says, you know, we don't know that guy and why are we doing it and da da da. So he didn't come in. It was about four months later at my own Rotary group and the prayers and concerns committee came up and they said, you know, so-and-so was in the university hospital. He had collapsed, he had a rare internal disease. It's been now six years or so. He's back home, but he still doesn't have capacity to sign. That's terrible. I felt really bad. Another story is the American Academy. They're based out of San Diego. They had someone that came to the seminar. And where's that little booklet? So the kids called up the firm and says, please tell me mom planned with you. Because they saw the brochure and the firm's name. She says, mom died. And they looked and they checked. And yeah, she'd come to the seminar, but she didn't come in for a consult or she canceled or something. Well, that was California. She died intestate. It was about $65,000 for a probate. Every attorney in this state would charge the same amount. It's set by statute. In Washington, it's whatever's reasonable. You know, but the, you know, the higher the law firm, you know, the big city attorneys, we charge more than those in Shelton and stuff like that. So anyway, they did the probate with them, and then the kids did trust planning to avoid that. So you know, this is serious stuff. Don't let that happen to you. So I want you to think about this. What kind of a legacy are you going to leave your family? I hope we can help you do an even better job with that. I certainly hope that I get to meet with each of you individually. The best way is during a consultation. Please contact our office to schedule your free initial consultation.